Hello there, good afternoon and welcome to Claret and Booze. My name's Virgil, aka John, and this is my daily ramble. I'm not having a rank because I'm not working today. I've got a lot of things to do tonight, mostly take my boy football training over at Leighton Orient. So, we're on international break. So the news is a little bit dull at the moment. However, the big news is, the big, big news is this. West Ham, the club, West Ham United Football Club have, defi- have, have decided, sorry, to not, to not fight the potential lifetime ban for Lucas Paqueta. Yesterday, news broke that West Ham were going to hire a top crack lawyer by the name of Nick DiMarco, not to be confused with the DiMarco brothers from EastEnders back in the mid-90s, but Nick DiMarco. But it's been revealed uh, today that West Ham will not be paying for the lawyers, will not be uh, employing the lawyers to fight the case against the Premier League on behalf of Paqueta. Indeed, um, quotes taken from a source at the club insist that it is not our job to employ lawyers to fight the case. It is his job. It is Lucas Paqueta's job to fight the case. How do you feel about this? Well, look, in essence, the club are right. The accusations aimed at Paqueta are potentially career threatening. You know, this is potentially a lifetime ban. Um, I believe that the um, case will begin in March this year. And what we therefore have is we have a you know, we have a we, we have a five, six month period of not knowing, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing any information. And the fact that the club are not involved in hiring any crack team of lawyers to defend him would probably would probably give you reasonings as to why that, that they're pretty much in the dark over all the information in regards to this. Or are they? Maybe. Maybe the club know the information. Maybe the club are awash with all the information that will be spoken about uh, at the tribunal, at the court of law, whatever it is, wherever it is they go to. And maybe the club have realised, I think we're fighting a losing battle here. Now, DiMarco, the lawyer mentioned, um, has beaten has beaten the Premier League on two or three occasions with huge, um, with huge court battles. The most recent being um, the sustainability points deduction pending that was aimed at Leicester City. Um, He managed to get Leicester City off with any points deduction. um, So he has a great reputation. But maybe West Ham have thought, well, why should we? Why should we pocket? uh, Sorry, why should we pay out to defend the indefensible? Why should we pay out? for something that we believe as a club, Paqueta has no defence. Now, a lot of the information is hearsay. A lot of the information is suspected, suspected, suspected. There may not be any direct links, but I believe by the laws of probability, if if the bets placed on him obtaining yellow cards against, I think it was Villa and Bournemouth and Leicester, to name three of them, and, and the winners were all in a certain part of the world, in a certain country, it raises massive suspicion. And maybe West Ham of a club have decided that we know he's one of our biggest assets, but we can't be seen to be throwing money down the drain. Now, as the world we live in, most definitely the country we live in, it's innocent until proven guilty. But it does seem very suspicious. Now, I'm not a police officer, I'm not a lawyer, a solicitor, etc. When you read all the allegations, um, when you see and read a lot of the information and a lot of the relations and, 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 and you know, that sounds a bit suspect, you know, how, how come so many people have put bets on that all of a sudden? You know, how comes this particular part of Brazil, there's been an increase in winners on that game involving a Brazilian who maybe originally was from there? It stinks. And to me, 
I think something needs to happen. Now, it is innocent until proven guilty. Of course it is. And I love Paquetta, okay? But if he has done this, and if he's found guilty, then he has no one to blame but himself. I'm sorry to say. It pains me to say it, all right? And I'm not giving up hope that he'll be found not guilty or there'll be a lack of evidence to, to, to charge him. Of course I am. I don't want him to get a lifetime ban. I don't want I don't want to lose Paquetta. But I think we've already lost Paquetta. And this sounds terrible, but we know what Paquetta has to offer. We know the caliber of player that Paquetta is. But this season, now I know the team have to some extent underperformed in, in many people's eyes, but this season to me, Paquetta's been a liability. Paquetta looks like he's got the world on his shoulders. And me being me, I'm looking at him continuously dragging his feet around that pitch, unable to unable to single-handedly change a game of football, which I know he has the capacity to do. He has the ability to do. But when I see the way he's playing, he looks like he's got the world on his shoulders. And I think the off-field saga is most definitely damaging his performances on the pitch. I hope I'm wrong. I hope when we come back after the international break that he's thriving again. I really do hope I'm wrong. But to me, he looks like a player with a lot of problems up here. He knows what's coming. He knows what he could lose as of March next year. His whole career. You know, there was a, a guy in the UK in non-league football who got a lifetime ban for something similar. Paquetta's, you know, Paquetta's at the top of his game. Paquetta is a name in football around the world, not just in the Premier League. I think something needs to be done with the club, maybe the coaching staff. I think if his performances continue, and again, it pains me to say it, and people are going to give me pelters, but we can't afford to carry him. Something needs to be done. Paquetta even needs to try, and I know it's tough, but he needs to try and switch off from what's happening off field and concentrate on his game. Or the club need to take him out the firing line. Because if you can imagine Paquetta, he knows what potentially could happen and he's worried about that. And he will be aware. He will be aware that he is underperforming at the moment. He will be absolutely aware of that. A player of that calibre and skill set will definitely know that he's underperforming. So do we take him out the firing line? Do we take him out the team almost to protect himself and protect his mental health? You know, it's World Mental Health Day today. You know, who takes responsibility for Paquetta now? Does he need to man up? as people would say? Does he need to take responsibility for his off-field actions, put them to one side and play the game that we want to see him play? That's what I'd like to see. But maybe somebody at the club needs to step in or a member of the coaching staff need to step in and say, look, we need to give this guy time off. And I'm sorry if that upsets people. I understand why it upsets people. It upsets me. He's our maverick. He's our talisman. He's our, you know, he's the one who's more Decanio-esque than anybody. But he's not doing it for me. So something needs to give. You know, are we carrying him a little bit? Look, this is not an anti Paquetta show. I love Paquetta, right? And I can forgive him for giving the ball away now and again. I can forgive him for all this stuff because we have to accept it because he's so far ahead up here. And he will try tricks and sometimes they'll come off and sometimes they won't. But I feel with him at the minute, he just doesn't look happy. And I get it. Maybe he's finding it hard to be happy with what he knows is around the corner in March 2025. Let me know what you think. Do we need to take him out the firing line or do we need to persist with him? Do we need to continue playing him in the hope that he will find his form again and be able to put aside what's happening off the field. If he starts enjoying his football again, he may be able to put to the back of his mind as hard as it may be what's happening out there. The rumours, the betting scandal. 
he might be able to put that to one side. But we need to see him enjoying himself on the pitch. And I don't think we can blame the manager for this. This is definitely, definitely mental. This is definitely, definitely with things that he's got on his mind, in my opinion. And the more bad performances he has, the more damaging it could potentially be long term. So let me know what you think in the comments. Going from one extreme to the other, I read a little article um, over the last couple of days about Pablo Four Nails. Now, we know his love of the club is far reaching. You know, when he did that goodbye video, um, I wouldn't say there was not a dry eye, dry, dry eye in the house, but we all, we all saw how emotional he got. And I'm sure that a lot of you, like me, uh, got, got very emotional as well. Uh, as well as well as well um he's coming out and saying all sorts he's been suggesting that he knew he wouldn't be able to play on the right for west ham because bowen had taken it you know to a whole new level he has been very very praising of david moyes he actually said that moyes gave a speech when they knew four nails was leaving and he said that it brought him to tears. Pablo Fornells was in tears at what David Moyes had said about him. That fills me with a little bit of joy because I know Fornells probably didn't want to leave, but it seemed that he was aware that he wasn't going to be able to get in on the right in his favoured position. And it seems that he was aware that maybe his time had come. Um, and I think you've got to give him a massive respect for that because I was worried that he went away almost forced out of the club. And maybe he wasn't. Maybe he, maybe he just realised himself that the love that he had for the club meant that he didn't want to be a bit part player anymore. Um, he, did the, he did the interview with The Athletic and he just, he just he, the memories and the love that he described and he has for the club really 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 made me realize how quickly players can become part of West Ham very quickly you know there's been many players in the past that have come and gone Craig Bellamy for example they loved the club and some of them only played here for a short time so look I think it's important that we give Moyes a little bit of respect here because it would seem that I was probably harsh in terms of um, the way that Fournell's left, it would seem that it was quite amicable. Fournell's also revealed that he had interest from another Premier League club. And I'm going to read out what he said. I had interest from another Premier League team, but there's no way I could join another club in England. It would feel weird playing against the club I love. It's easier to live in London than other European countries. But if it's not West Ham, then there's no chance. It could be Manchester City or Manchester United. I can't do it. I can't picture myself scoring, playing or celebrating against West Ham. That says it all. That absolutely says it all to me. That boy bleeds claret and blue. And although he plays for Real Betis, I'm off the, I'm, I, also, I also read that his, his son wants to always go to Real Betis games in West Ham colours. Um, he also goes on to say... When I needed that bit of love during hard moments, the club was there for me. I'm so grateful I was there during one of my most, during one of the most successful moments of the club's history. We qualified three years in a row for Europe, won a trophy, and the fans have a chant for me. Small things. That little chant meant so much to this man because he wanted to be loved. And he is loved and he always will be loved. So Pablo... Don't worry, mate. We love you as much as you love us. Anyway, look, I'm going to wrap up. As I said, I'm not saying Paquetta out, but what do we do to protect Paquetta? Does he need to be protected from himself? Does he need to be taken out of the limelight? Let me know what you think. Should the club be paying to defend him? I sort of see their argument why they shouldn't. And if he does get found guilty and he does get a lifetime ban, I suppose all ties are cut. Contract will be null and void. Gross misconduct, probably. Something like that. Not really sure how it works. Will they have to pay him up or agree, to, agree a pay-up offer? I don't really know. But let me know what you think. Put your comments 
in the ch in the in the comment section. I'll reply to as many as I can. And again, please forgive me. This is not anti Paqueta. I love the guy, but I think he needs to be protected from himself. Anyway, please hit the like button if you haven't already. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps massively. And um, yep, enjoy England Greece tonight. Because I know I won't. Bloody, what a waste of time. Too many international breaks. Too many international breaks. I mean, who wants to watch England Greece in a friendly? You can dress it up as much as you want. Yeah? It's a bloody friendly. Who cares? I don't watch friendlies at the best of time. Don't try and dress it up as something it isn't with relegation and promotion. And I know a bunch of Italians are getting there very, very excited because they might win something. I don't give a monkeys. I'm not going to watch this Mickey Mouse tournament. Not going to watch it at all. Anyway, like I was saying, hit the like button, subscribe. See you soon. I've been Virgil. Adios, amigos. Love you, Pablo.